Let's go to 1 Samuel chapter 24. I want to show you something about David where you can see how he, you can see the kind of heart this man had. So different from others. You saw that when he went and fought Goliath, the kind of heart he had. Everybody had a heart of fear, unbelief. No courage, but this guy had a heart of boldness. Believed in God, believed in great things. The giant can be slain with one stone. Great. But look at the other side. The kindness of his heart. In chapter 24 of 1 Samuel, I don't want to read the whole thing. I want to read from verse 15 later on. But listen to the first part of the story because there may be people that don't know the story of David. They probably, everybody knows David and Goliath. I'm surprised these days how much the world knows about the Bible. Anytime you hear the news, they're talking about Good Samaritan and all that, you know. So I say, well, that's good. You know the Bible. <laughs> 
But this is the thing. In 1 Samuel chapter 24, you pick up the story where David is running and Saul is chasing. You know, after he killed Goliath, the women sang, David killed, I mean, Saul killed a thousand, David killed ten thousand. That created a lot of jealousy. Plus the prophet Samuel announced to Saul that his kingdom is not going to last very long. That God has chosen a man after his own heart, that is David, and he's going to rule and reign. Because Saul has been disobedient, did not honor God in the way that he should. So Saul has become very insecure. Because he's going to lose his power, lose his uh, kingship and all that. And uh, he wants to kill David. He tried one or two times throwing his spear and all that but it didn't work. And now David is running and Saul is chasing. And they come to a point where Saul gets into a cave. In the first 14 verses you read that. Saul gets into a cave to relieve himself. He wants to go to the bathroom, you know. <laughs> Simply. Goes in there, not knowing that David and his men are hiding there. David and his men are there. And the men told David, look, we've been running long enough. Let's put an end to it today. Here is this man. You know, like a sitting duck. God has delivered him into your hands. These are the exact words they said. God said he will deliver your enemies into your hands. So he has done it. Don't be a fool and miss out on this chance. Do as you please. If you want to take out his two hands and two legs, fine, do that. Kill him, do that. Do something. Put an end to this. Let's stop this running. Let's make you king. But David doesn't do that. David restrains them also. He calms them down. He said, nobody lay hands on him. Nobody do anything to him. He goes in. And from the shawl that is hanging on Saul's shoulders, he cuts a little piece and keeps it as proof. And when Saul comes out, he meets him outside and he says, he bows before him because he is the king and says, why do you believe other people? You know, all these big people have very petty people with them, you know, usually. That feed them wrong information. So somebody has been feeding wrong information to Saul saying David is, you know, against you and he's going to do this, he's going to kill you and all this business, you know. That's how the whole thing uh, flared up. So why do you believe other people that say all these nonsense about me? I'm not your enemy. I could have killed you just now a few minutes ago. The Lord delivered you into my hands. You were at my mercy. I could have finished your life right then and there. But look what I did. I cut off a little piece but didn't do anything to you. And when he got through saying that, in chapter 24, now let me read from verse, pick it up from verse 16, now I want to go through the, to the end. And it came to pass when David made a, had made an end of speaking, after David had said all this, that he did not kill him when he had a chance to kill him, and here is the proof. And he made an end of speaking these words unto Saul, that Saul said, is this thy voice, my son David? And Saul lifted up his voice and wept. And he said to David, thou art more righteous than I, for thou hast rewarded me for good, rewarded me good. Whereas I have rewarded thee evil, and thou hast showed this day how that thou hast dealt well with me, for as much as when the Lord has delivered me into thine hand, Thou killest me not. For if a man find his enemy, will he let him go well away? Wherefore the Lord reward thee good for that thou hast done unto me this day. Let the Lord reward you good for what you've done to me this day, he says. So Saul repents of the way he has treated David because he realizes this man could have killed me, but look at the kind of man he is. He's very impressed and he weeps and blesses him. And now behold, I know well that thou shalt surely be king and the kingdom of Israel shall be established in thine hand. Saul could see king material in David. Saul could see, hey, this man, this guy, he's a little guy, he's younger, inexperienced, just a shepherd boy, but he is worthy to be a king because he's got a heart, a good heart righteous heart 
a just heart that does the right thing. That's the kind of man that needs to rule anywhere. <laughs> Good man with righteousness inside to do the right thing. He says he's he's got the king, but he's got the he's got the humility. Low. Jesus said, "I'm gentle and lowly." <coughs> the word lowly means humility. So here he sees those qualities in David, that he has got gentleness, he's got restraint, he's got discipline, he controls himself well, he's got good leadership, he's got humility, he's utterly humble. He respects the king so much, bows before him all the way to the floor. He bowed to the king. He sees that there are kingly qualities in this man, a heart that is different. He saw it last time that he had a different heart when he went against Goliath. He had a courageous heart, a bold heart, daring heart that did not fear anything. That's good. But this side of the heart is also another important thing. This 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 kind of heart is important. Not only should be you be bold and courageous and all that, you should be righteous, just and good, kind, tender-hearted. And that David possessed. What a great quality to be a king! Now this guy, even though he was just the shepherd who shepherded just a few flock, few sheep, this guy had the elements that are required for greatness. All that is required for greatness. So Saul says, "You will be the king, and your kingdom will be established." And verse twenty-one, he says, "Swear now, therefore, unto me by the Lord, that thou wilt not cut off my seed after me, that thou wilt not destroy my name out of my father's house." And David swore to Saul, and Saul went home, and David and his men got them up unto the hold. So he makes him promise that he will not cut off his name. That his descendants will not be totally cut off. You know, after this, Saul and his son Jonathan die in a battle, and his family, everybody is gone. And uh, Jonathan's son, which is Saul's grandson, there was a little boy that was carried as a child by a woman as she was running for her life. The boy was dropped, and he became lame for life. And she took him and raised him in a faraway village. and david when he became king as soon as he became king look at the kind of heart he had he called people and sent word throughout the country to search everywhere to see if there is anyone left from david's house i mean saul's house so they go and search and they find that there is this guy called mephibosheth lame cannot walk lost his lands lost his property lost his status everything lives like a poor man <laughs> come and report to him and he sends word and brings mephibosheth from far mephibosheth thinks my god you know i'm finished i'm the only one left and he's going to kill me because in those days new kings destroyed anybody that's a descendant of the old king because they should not come to claim uh, the kingdom you know so they destroyed made sure they searched and killed in those days so he thought now the search team has come they're going to take me and he comes and falls before Saul and says i'm like a little dog he says i'm nothing humbles himself he says he cries before him because he's afraid he's going to kill him david says no no i didn't bring you to kill kill you i found you because i made a promise to your grandfather and to your father my friend i made a promise that i will not hurt your family i was looking for anyone that's available so i can do good searching everywhere to do good and i brought you i'm not going to kill you you should eat at my table every day he said as a king's grandson you are allowed to eat at my table and from that day mephibosheth ate at the king's table look at the tender heartedness of david a heart that forgives a heart that is merciful heart that is kind and a heart that is qualified to be a king and a great king no wonder he lived a long time and when he was an old man he was full of wealth and honor the bible says as an old man 
wealth and honor was no problem because when the heart is good all those things come without the heart being good all those things can be harmful really power can be harmful even money can be harmful that is what the bible teaches you see when the heart is good see i was preaching on prosperity one time and one fellow said if you teach prosperity people will get spoiled just keep holiness <laughs> i said no not that kind of not the kind of prosperity i teach i'm not saying that i'll pray and you put your hand in your pocket and you'll find 1 lakh rupees not that kind of prosperity that will harm you <laughs> if i can pray and produce lakhs of rupees in your pockets i can bet on it some of you going to go have a party today with that money you seen people that earn a little bit more sometimes when little bit more money comes their mind goes berserk i used to study in a school where there was a press right next door you know big press where a lot of people worked in those days maybe 100 people or so and on the first of the month they used to give salaries on that day a lot of women used to stand at the gate and i used to go in a rickshaw i was just a little boy i didn't understand what was happening so i saw this every month happening on the first of the month i thought ask the rickshaw guy i said what is this every first of the month all these women are standing there he said they are second wives of these guys that are working there they want to get the salary money before the first wife gets it so they they come at the press and collect the money at that time i didn't even know that people had second wives you know i was so small and the guy gave me a lesson on that i was astonished i i said my god you know these guys are not rich they're not just making enough just to eat and live is bare minimum they're making i'm sure they're not rich people you know but yet if their salary went up a little bit when the money increased a little bit the mind went in thousand directions where can i party today you know that's the kind of mind some people have how many of you think that's very dangerous to give money into those hands <laughs> because if you give money into those hands they they'll just go self destruct <laughs> with money money can become an evil thing for them we don't teach that kind of prosperity a prosperity that the bible teach teaches is a prosperity of the heart that is why as the soul prospers so you prosper it is prosperity of the heart when the heart prospers the heart is now prepared to handle greatness the heart is now prepared to handle well being the heart is now prepared to handle success the heart is now prepared to handle money the heart is now prepared to handle everything that god gives into our hands so when more comes you're thinking how much more good i can do and not how i can have fun somewhere when nobody is seeing you know i told him with this kind of teaching people will get more holy brother by the time they get prosperous we take them through that route where they'll become very holy before they even become prosperous because that is the way that god uses god uses his word and sends it to the hearts of people and prepares the heart and makes it fit for success and fit for greatness this is how faith works this is the life of faith what is the life of faith life of faith is the word coming and framing your future word of god coming into your heart you are prepared for greatness you are given a great vision you are given the courage you are given the boldness you are given all the confidence that you need you are given the kindness and the gentleness and the tender heartedness you are given all those things that god himself has that christ may dwell in our hearts by faith that's what it means your prayer should be that christ may dwell in our hearts by faith when that happens you can see faith is working in the heart of people that's living by faith and that person is going to do great things for god and that kind of a greatness is for every single person here god intends that kind of greatness for all of us and god can do it in our lives god can pick you up from where you are no matter where you are today and god can send forth his word and frame and design your life your future by the word of god and take you in that direction and give you great victory 
so that you will not live for yourself but you will accomplish god's purposes for your life and that is what faith is all about faith is not just about accomplishing what we want to accomplish it is about accomplishing what god wants for our lives because you and i are here for god just to do what god wants not for ourselves amen shall we all stand together we'll continue next week Let's lift up our hands and give thanks to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we come, we give you thanks for these words that we heard today. Father, we realize that only your gentleness makes us great. That your heart can take us to greatness. We need your heart, your love, your mercy, your loving kindness, your tenderness, your courage, your confidence, your boldness. your faith and we open our hearts today oh god that the spirit of god will work these things in our hearts that the word of god will come into the hearts of people that as people hear the word of god meditate upon god's word that faith will come by the hearing of god's word that faith will come for every situation every challenge that they face that they'll be blessed and become a blessing to many and fulfill God's purposes in their lives you have made us for greatness we are meant for greatness and i pray that every will everyone will rise by faith to that greatness and live in that way in this world and live their lives in that way accomplishing things for you o oh father We bless each and every one. May the word continue to work in their hearts. Even as we sleep, your word is working in our hearts. Day by day, it's working in our hearts. And every mountain can be moved. Every situation can be changed. All obstacles and hindrances can be gone. Nothing can stop us from growing and accomplishing what God has for us. When it happens from the heart. From the heart, help us to produce good things. for the kingdom of god in jesus name we pray amen now may the grace of our lord jesus christ and the love of the father and the fellowship of the holy spirit abide with each and every one of us for now and forevermore amen take my life down at your feet you're the only one i to you and you were always there In troubled times it's you i see but you first that so like me the lord i am oh to you
living all for you. Living all for you One more time 